everybody. In today's video, I'm going to be giving you a look at the basic functionality of how to use your barometer on the Garmin Instinct crossover watch. I'm going to be using the solar in today's video. It shouldn't matter whether you've got the solar or the non-solar version. This video should work the same for everybody. I'll also say this is a feature that is not unique to the crossover, the Instinct 1, the Instinct 2, the Forerunner 955, the Phoenix. There are several other Garmin watches out there that have a barometer sensor on them. But it is a little bit unique with the crossover in terms of what the values look like. Similar to the Instinct 1 and 2, but because you've got watch hands involved, it's going to be a little bit different. The functionality is the same way. There's multiple ways to get to your barometer value on the watch. The most basic way is you can set it as a data field on your watch face. You can see that's what I've got right here. This little icon is your barometric pressure, and then you've got your value uh, down here at the bottom. A lot of people think the analog values are cool. They, it looks good, it's easy to see. What you find is a lot of times it will cover your data field, as we can see right now, where my hour hand is covering my data field on the watch. And that's to be expected when you get a uh, anti-digital watch like this one is. That's the most basic way to see your barometric pressure. You can see that all we're getting is just our current barometric pressure reading. The other way you can get to your barometer is you can set it in your control menu or control wheel. If I press and hold the top left button on the watch, that takes me to my control wheel, and you can actually customize the items that are in here. All the control wheel is, is basically a shortcut to the items that you use on a regular basis. When I went into mine, you can see it put me on the moon phases because that's the last thing I used. I could use the up or down button, and you can see that I have the barometer as one of the items in my control wheel. If I go down to the barometer, I can press GPS to select it, and it will drop me straight into my barometer. You'll notice it's kind of uh, unique how they did it on this watch. It showed the plot area time. It said last 48 hours, and then it quickly changes and shows me my high and my low barometric pr pressure value over that given period of time, as well as my current barometric pressure value right now. So 10,010 hectopascals is where I'm currently at, and then this is what my low and high have been for the last 48 hours. If I remember right, on the Instinct 1 and 2, it, it continues to show you that plot area value uh, on here. Here it quickly uh, disappears, so I'll go into it one more time. It last 48 hours, and after a couple of seconds, it toggles off of there. The other thing you'll notice that's unique is when we go into the barometer this way, we have the light background, uh, the light background of our screen, and then the font is in dark colors, which I tend to prefer. You cannot do this as a watch face, which is really silly on this watch. So it's available. You can see it in things like your barometer, but when you go and try and customize your watch face, you cannot have the light background with the dark font. So, nonetheless, that's the quick. That's one way to get to your barometer. I'm going to go ahead and go back. The other thing you can do is you can add the barometer glance to the watch. Just like on the Instinct 1 and 2, you're going to press the up or down button to get into your glances, or on the Instinct 1, they're called widgets. I'm going to simply go down. I already have the barometer in there. Looks a little bit different. It gives me my current reading with a decimal point. That you didn't get when we were in the barometer a minute ago from our controls menu. You can see that that value is currently updating. It's reading my sensor on the right-hand side of the watch. If I press GPS to go into the barometer, it looks pretty much the same as what we saw a minute ago from the controls menu. But when you go to it from the glance, we've got the inverted display, the dark background with the light font. Everything else is the same. Another unique thing with the way they did it on the watch is we're going to the same place, but depending on which way you go, you're going to get a different color in your display. Again, it's our barometric pressure, the low, the high, the current pressure, without the decimal point. I can press and hold the menu button while I'm in the barometer, and I can get to my barometer options. You can press the GPS button to go into my barometer options. You can calibrate your barometer. Maybe you're having problems. Maybe you're getting invalid readings. You can do a calibration to basically reset it. You can adjust the plot area. So when we went in, we could see my barometric pressure over the last 48 hours. If I press GPS, you can change that to 24 hours, 12 hours, or 6 hours. The cool thing is if we change it here, it will also adjust it anywhere else. So if we go to the barometer from the controls menu, it will be now 6 hours. 
if we add it as a data field on our watch face where it shows the trend, it will be in the six hour plot. We can get to our storm alert. The storm alert basically will notify you whenever there is a rapid change in barometric pressure. You can simply toggle this on or off, or if you needed to, you could adjust the rate. Maybe you're getting invalid readings. You can adjust how, many, how much of a change in a period of time is required in order for the storm alert to go off. Now you'll notice mine is showing in hectopascals. That's because that's what my barometric pressure units are set to. So everywhere else that references the barometer will use those same units. In a second here, I will show you how we can change that. If you go down to the sensor mode, you can change it. Auto means the watch will determine if it's gonna use your altimeter or barometer. If it, if it tracks that you are doing hiking and you're having uh, altitude changes, it will switch automatically to altimeter. In my case, because I'm sitting still, the alt, uh, altitude value is not changing. It's gonna be using my barometer, but you can go down and you can specify for your barometric pressure, just use the barometer sensor or just use the altimeter only. I think in most cases, people would leave this set to automatic. If I was going hiking though, or climbing a mountain, I would switch it to altimeter. And you can see when I switched it, it basically said, okay, that's what that does. And then the last option is what I mentioned before. You can change your barometric pressure units. Mine are currently set to hectopascals. I press the GPS button, I can change it to millibars, uh, millimeters of mercury, or inches of mercury. It's one of the cool things about the Garmin watches is they give you those four options. Most other watches will give you like inches of mercury and hectopascals and that's it, uh, which in most cases will work. Garmin gives you a few different options that you don't get with Centel watches or your Casio watches. Set this to whatever you want. If I was to switch it, let me just go ahead and change it for example, from hectopascals, let's set it to millimeters of mercury. Now, if I go back to my storm alert, whereas before the rate was in hectopascals, now it's in millimeters of mercury because that's what my barometric pressure units have been switched to. Go ahead and go back to the main watch face. That's a quick look at the barometer. You'll notice now when we go into the barometer glance, instead of it being in hectopascals, it's in millimeters of mercury. Same thing with my watch face data field. It's in millimeters of mercury. That setting will follow you throughout the watch. I wanted to show there are better watch faces than this one in terms of your barometer. I'm gonna go ahead and press the middle button, choose a different watch face. Here's a better example. Again, your hands will get in the way of your data fields, but up top you can see my plot area, and then my current barometric pressure at a glance. Pretty simple stuff. I hope that gives you an idea of how to use the barometer, how to see your barometric pressure on the Garmin Instinct crossover watch. I hope the video helps.